Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. We have a special one for you today. <laughs> and, and yeah, yeah, when I say special, I mean exactly what you think I mean. This, in a tier 10 domination battle here on the north map, is Yiyu. And he is, of course, in the USS Salem. The Salem being a tier 10 premium sister ship of the USS Des Moines. And honestly, I think the Salem gets a lot of unfair flack for being the sort of Walmart version of the Des Moines. And that's mostly because of the differences between the consumable choices that both ships, which are sister ships, by the way, they're both Des Moines class heavy cruisers. But whereas the USS Des Moines, which is the tech tree version of this class of cruiser, has a 10 kilometer surveillance radar, can choose catapult fighter or spotting aircraft and has a standard repair party, the Salem can choose between either a really kind of shit 8.5 kilometer version of the surveillance radar or take hydroacoustic search, doesn't get aircraft at all, but has a very, very good repair party, which you will see in use during the course of this battle. Honestly, it's more like a Royal Navy light cruiser repair party than the standard repair party that everybody else gets. I'd say that the Salem isn't really any better or worse than the Des Moines. I mean, it's got the same 8-inch auto-loading guns as the Des Moines. It's got more or less the same AA as the Des Moines. I mean, it, it's not exactly the same. The Salem's is technically worse, but that's just because the Salem doesn't get the actually kind of pretty bad short-range 20mm Ehrlichans that don't make any difference anyway. They're just different. Yeah, the Salem's radar is kind of bad, but its heel is absolutely amazing. Yi started off this battle by, very politely, asking the Harugamo up ahead if he could drop a smoke for him. Now, I'm not expecting the Harugamo to comply, but there's no harm in asking. Yiyu has now, of course, been spotted, which must mean that there's one of the four, or possibly more than one of the four, enemy destroyers up ahead. Yep, sure enough, there it is, Shimkazi. Now there's a couple of things about to happen here that I just don't understand. First of all, the Shimakazi is going to have a very, very bad day unless he pops his smokescreen, because he's getting shot at by a Salem and a Harugamo, and yet he doesn't pop his smokescreen. He's running his engine boost, he's trying to get out of there, but how the hell did a Shimakazi get spotted by a Harugamo in the first place? It's got the best stealth of all tier 10 destroyers. I mean, it's got at least a kilometer, at least a kilometer better stealth than the Harugamo. And yet he allowed himself to get spotted by the Harugamo for long enough to get him killed. And then we come back to the Harugamo, who understandably, because he's a gunboat and he wants to shoot things, didn't drop a smoke screen for Yiyu here. But now that he's in the shit, his smoke is available because he hasn't used it. And he's still not using it. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> I mean, you know, I get it. It doesn't hurt to ask a destroyer. If you're in a cruiser, it doesn't hurt to ask a destroyer if he can pop the smoke for you. And if it had been something like a Shimakazi, that certainly at the beginning of a battle definitely doesn't want to start shooting at things and giving its position away, maybe he'll give you a smoke. Then you can sit in the smoke screen, he can spot targets for you, get all kinds of lovely spot and damage, and you can farm damage. A gunboat destroyer like the Harugamo, I would not be surprised if he didn't want to drop a smoke for you, because then, if both you and he are inside the smoke, nobody's spotting targets. Neither of you have anything to shoot at. So, it was understandable that the Harugamo didn't want to give him a smoke screen. But it was completely not understandable <laughs> that when the Harugamo needed the smoke for himself, he still didn't use it. In fact, the Harugamo died trying to get closer to the ships that were killing him. <laughs> I mean, there's an enemy Salem down there as well with a, you know, shit 8.5 kilometer radar. I'm pretty sure the Harugamo was not inside radar range, but if he'd kept going and survived a few seconds longer, he would have been. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. I, I, I just don't get it. Maybe the Harugamo was trying to flip the cap circle at Alpha because he did die right on the border. I mean, I'm not saying that makes it okay, right? I'm just trying to make sense of what he was doing. Anyway, oh look, there's the enemy Salem. Ooh, Citadel City. US Navy, super heavy, eight inch armor piercing shells. They are absolutely brutal. Salem's angling away now, of course, so switches back to the high explosive, sets a fire. 
taking some return fire, but the Salem's getting out of there and now only has one turret to return fire with and probably wants to go undetected, although that's going to be more difficult now that he's burning because, of course, ships that are on fire have increased detectability. He is far enough away that he has managed to escape, however. EU switching fire to the Conqueror, and that is a very, very dangerous battleship. The high explosive shells fired by that thing are absolutely brutal, with something like a 63% chance of setting fire to a target. Can't match the Salem's rate of fire, though. And the Conqueror, of course, is another ship that's famous for having a god-tier heal. I mean, that thing can... providing it's only really taken high explosive or flooding or fire damage, uh, which it pretty much is, that thing can basically print itself a new ship. I mean, Conquerors just don't care if they're on fire, unless they're about to die because they're on such low health, because they can basically heal back all of that fire damage. So there's a triple fire set on the Conqueror. I think you, you, you may have outstayed your welcome here, because they're now all shooting at you, even the Salem's come back. The Conqueror has used the teal though. It's on cooldown. And it doesn't, that's four fires. <laughs> the Conqueror doesn't have fire prevention. Yep, there's a dead Conqueror, finished off with the armor piercing. Now might be a good time to bail out you, you. That Conqueror just got schooled though. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just as I was saying, Conquerors don't really care if they're on fire, unless they're about to die. I mean, it's not surprising to see a Conqueror Captain who hasn't taken the Fire Prevention skill because the Conqueror's Mega Heal can basically heal back all of that fire damage. Providing you're not continuing to take damage, of course, which the Conqueror was. And, I mean, you know, there's fire damage and then there's fire damage. Four fires is a lot of damage. And with the absurd rate of fire of the Salem's 8-inch high explosive shells, he was just continuing to get pounded. So even though he popped his heel, it really just delayed the inevitable. That is a lot of torpedoes. Do the enemy team have another Shemakazi? They do. And a quick look at the minimap tells us that it's a Shemakazi who has not yet been spotted. The most dangerous kind of Shemakazi, the one who's capable of thinking and breathing at the same time. Okay, let's take a quick look at the situation. So they're ahead on kills, but only by one battleship. Uh, so that's given them an early points lead, but it's not much of a points lead. It's less than 30 points and the gap is narrowing because they only have one of the three cap circles. So minor points lead about to turn into a points deficit unless they take one of those two outstanding cap circles or they start killing more ships. So I know that's a lot to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see how things go. Can't really see what's going on over at the other end of the map. I mean, the team do have Charlie. We have lost two of our four destroyers, of course, but then again, so have the enemy team. The friendly Des Moines, who's cowering behind an island all the way over there on the uh, eastern map border, just popped his radar and found nothing. And that's the good version of the radar, by the way, with the 10 kilometer range. He's probably trying to locate the enemy Tromp who also appears to be capable of thinking and breathing at the same time because he's staying more than 10 kilometers away from the Des Moines. The team have just picked up another kill. They're now at 500 points. Enemy Thundra just went down to the friendly Republic. That's another very, very dangerous ship. So the enemy team are now down two destroyers and two battleships for the price of two of Yi's destroyers. There's nothing in range for him to shoot at, though. I mean, I can kind of understand these guys not wanting to push that cap circle because there's definitely a destroyer, probably a Shimakaze down there. Oh, hang on a second. There he is. There's the Shimakaze. And there are his torpedoes. The Slava is now in shooting range, and he's already burning from a single fire. The Slava is another extremely dangerous battleship, especially at long range. It's basically on with railguns that don't miss. Those torpedoes, however, are going to be a big problem. Yep, I've got to give that Shimakaze credit. He just sank the Mecklenburg, and his earlier torpedo salvo did some serious damage to the Thunderer that Yiyu is divisioned up with. But the Slava down there could now be in a lot of trouble. Actually, you know, Yiyu could be in a lot of trouble as well, because it's not just the Slava shooting at him. Oh, and that was an unfortunate salvo. It looks like the Slava might be reversing. Come on, you've got this, though. 
You've got to finish it. You can't afford to let a dangerous battleship like that on very, very low health get away with it. The Slava had the chance there to go undetected, and he blew it by unleashing a 16-inch armor piercing salvo. It looks like he's trying to heal back the damage. He has extinguished the fire. Come on. Can you get him? With some assistance from the Thunderer. There it goes. Before he reloads his guns. Nice. Sadly, nowhere near nice enough because the enemy team have been racking up the kills as well. They've just managed to sink Yi's Slava. So while both teams are even on kills with five kills apiece, the enemy team, because they've held on to two of the three cap circles for the entire match, more or less, are far ahead on points and getting further ahead on points with every passing second. What makes things worse is, well, just look at the map. There's not a lot of opportunity here for Yi's team to start clawing those points, and when I say points, I basically mean the cap circles, back. There's a Kremlin, an extremely tough Russian battleship down there, slap bang in the middle of cap circles Alpha and Bravo, who presumably has a Shimakaze up in front of him, spotting targets and sending walls of skill in their direction. The Kremlin's starting to back off. Not sure where that Shimakaze went, because Yi Yu is no longer spotted. But the presence of the Shimakaze is going to be a real problem for any of the destroyers on the team trying to nose into either of those two cap circles, because the Shimakaze will outspot them. Although neither of the destroyers on the team appear to be willing to take the risk. The Summers is kind of hanging back. Very understandable, given that he has basically no health left and there's probably a Shimakaze going to outspot him over there. Down at the other end of the map, the Alvaro de Bazan, the Spanish destroyer, is... Um, it looks like he's trying to find and kill the Trump, which is not a complete waste of his time, but he's obviously getting out spotted by the Trump, because the Trump is undetected, and uh, the Spanish destroyer keeps getting hit by the Trump's airstrikes, so good luck to him. And with the enemy presence over here reduced to, well, potentially, the Salem, and that gross occur first... Oh, and the Salem just popped up in the middle of the map, so he's not going to be a threat. Looks like it's time to farm us some German battleship. Now, the Grosser Kerr first is not an easy target to take on. I mean, if it hits you, those guns, you can take a lot of damage. It has to hit you first. Oh, and that was close, but no cigar. You also definitely do not want to get within the firing range of the secondary gun batteries, because your health will just evaporate. So Yu is keeping the distance, He's angled, and he can actually bounce a Grosser Kerr first main gun battery shell if he takes it on his angled belt. I mean, it'll, it'll wreck his superstructure, and if it hits anything flat, it'll go right through and potentially sit it on you, but they really do need to take the risk. And it's not that much of a risk. I mean, if the Grosser Kerr first fires and misses, you've got a long firing window in a Salem or a Des Moines to inflict some serious damage. And he's not the only one shooting at him as well, of course. The Thunderer is also getting stuck in, and they really, really need to start getting some kills because they did just lose the Des Moines, although somebody else has just equalised. So, you know, they're now only 250 points behind. <laughs> so, yeah, that's nothing. Plus, they really, really need to kill this Grosser Kerr first for another very good reason. If you look at the map, the Summers has just sneaked into that cap circle, and they really need some cap circles. Because they're just not winning on kills. So if that Grosser Kerr first would do us all the favour of dying, that would be lovely. And I think he might. No, he's just not cooperating, is he? He's trying to heal that damage back. Oh, this is dangerous, but, I mean, what can you do? You need to kill him. Come on, baby. Oh, disaster. The Thunderer just went down to the enemy Kremlin. But, the Grosser Kerr first succumbs to the barrage of high explosive shells, and the Summers also manages to get a kill. Sadly, that's not nearly going to be enough. Despite that, they are still... 200 points behind, although the Summers, as well as getting the kill, has managed to flip that cap circle at Alpha. But, with the demise of the Des Moines to the enemy Austin, over in the vicinity of cap circle Charlie, that means I, probably the Trump, it might be the Austin, but somebody on the enemy team is now flipping the cap circle at Charlie as well. The enemy team have a Marseille, occupying the cap circle at Bravo, somebody is flipping Charlie, and there's still a Shimakaze in that rough direction somewhere. 
And he's only been spotted once this entire game, and it was only for a few seconds. And oh look, do you see those torpedoes? I think we might have a basic idea of where the Shimakaze is. The Republic is in a lot of trouble. And I had speculated that that Shimakaze captain is the dangerous kind of Shimakaze captain, the kind who's capable of thinking and breathing at the same time. Oh yeah? Why is he giving his position away by shooting at the Republic then? Look at how much health the Republic has. Remember, the Republic's fire and armor piercing. It's just going to overpenetrate a Shimakaze, and the Shimakaze has plenty of health. And the Shimakaze's guns, while they rotate kind of slowly, and they don't fire very often, the high explosive shells, for 127mm shells, they hit really, really hard. That Republic is... Well, look. The Shimakaze's going to kill him. If not with fires, then with gunfire. And there's nobody in a position to support the Republic. So the Shimakaze is... And they've just lost the Thunderer. And yep, the Shimaka the Thunderer, by the way, went down to the enemy Salem's secondaries. <laughs> so that's a thing. <laughs> All right. And uh, yeah, the Shimakaze gunned down the Republic. The Alvaro de Bazan arrived a day late and a dollar short. Does the Shimakaze want to get into a gunfight with the Alvaro Bazan? Which it might win due to the health difference, but no, he doesn't need to get into a gunfight with the Alvaro Bazan. So he's gone undetected. The Alvaro de Bazan, even though it may lose a gunfight to a Shimakaze, does need to get into a gunfight with the Shimakaze, because the enemy team are 300 points and one kill up. And while Yu's team have been doing well with trying to redress the cap circle balance, it's no longer in their favour. And the Shimakaze is now getting into a gunfight. Of course, he's not the only one shooting at the Alvaro de Bazan, and he's won that as well. Two of them left. The Summers, who basically has no health. The enemy team are at 922 points. The Summers is going to flip that central cap circle, but even with two cap circles under their control, and the enemy team now only having one, they cannot win on points. In the three minutes remaining, the enemy team are too far ahead. 931 points, 934. They have a nearly 400-point lead. Yu's team need to kill ships in order to win. They might need to kill all of the ships in order to win. And Yu is spotted, and the Summers is in no position to get into a fight. I mean, he's done a, he's done a good job this game. Let's give him some credit here. He's flipped two of the cap circles. The Summers, in fact, is probably the only reason this game hasn't already been lost. But with two and a half minutes to go, and that kind of points lead, the only thing the enemy team need to do now is nothing, and they've won it. So, of course. <laughs> That's the exact opposite of what they, in fact, do. So, here come the Tromps airstrikes. There's the Shimakaze. He's managed to dodge those torpedoes. The radar is up. The Shimakaze made the mistake of getting within the Salem's radar range. He's dead. Here comes the enemy Salem, the Marseille, and the Tromp. All three of which are attacking. Now, yes, the Summers has gone down. But because they killed the Shimakaze, that's no longer an automatic loss. He still has some time. The Marseille managed to put himself into a situation where he wasn't able to support the Salem by ducking in behind the island there. Yiyu now has a nice island between himself and the Tromp, and is able to start hosing down the Marseille. There goes the Super Heel. <laughs> Another airstrike from the Tromp, double fire, there's the damage control. Kills the Marseille. The Tromp is just around this corner. Can he take the hint and run away? And just take the win? Or is he going to go for it? He may have been trying to run away. <laughs> <laughs> and Yiyu is going to take the torpedo, but that super heal went into effect. And if the Tromp was trying to run away, he was running in the wrong direction. <laughs> and that's the Kraken Unleashed, and the most unlikely win imaginable for Yiyu in the USS Salem. We'd like to thank the enemy team, in particular the Marseille, the Salem, the Tromp, and surprisingly the Shimakaze, who was doing really well and then suffered a sudden inexplicable and fatal rush of shit to the brain at the end there. 
but if not for those four enemy players' complete apparent inability to just take the hint and do nothing, this nearly 3,000 base experience winning match would quite simply not have been possible for Yiyu in the USS Salem. I'm sure Yiyu will be eternally grateful to all four of them, and yes, this could very easily have been an episode of Game of Thrones, but I wanted to keep the surprise going until the end, so <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed it, because that's it for today. Congratulations, Yiyu, and uh, as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.